At the end of your life, do you want to look back and feel a sense of pride and accomplishment for the way that you have lived? I always dreamed of seeing the Grand Canyon. Three years ago, I finally had the opportunity to bring that dream to life. I went with two close friends on a guided tour. And when we got there, the tour guide had us approach the canyon with our heads down. So when we got our first glimpse of it, we were able to look out at it and soak in the vastness of its beauty. I got to the edge of the canyon and I looked out and I was so overcome with gratitude and awe that tears of joy began to stream down my face. I couldn't believe that I was standing here after picturing what it would be like for over 20 years. In that moment, each breath I took was filled with an overwhelming sense of passion and love for life and freedom. This is the opposite of what I felt when I was 16 years old. I called my mom from a juvenile detention facility and said, if I go to prison, I am going to kill myself. In my mind, I was convinced that I couldn't handle it. When I was first arrested, I didn't know how to deal with all of the emotions I was feeling. The guilt, anger, and shame consumed me, and I took it out on everyone around me. About a week prior to this, I was the driver in a crime that took the lives of two people. I was charged as an adult and sentenced to 96 years in prison for my role in the crime. Year after year, I was faced with appeals that were denied and legislation efforts that failed. Some days I would wake up open my eyes and remember where I was as I stared at a prison wall. And I felt such a deep sense of despair that I was sure I could not go on. I was torn between thinking that I would die in prison or that maybe one day the laws would change and I would get out. That hope though felt so far out of reach as my years in prison just kept accumulating. Over the years, I was trying to determine how I became the kind of person who landed themselves in prison, the kind of person who negatively impacted other people's lives. However, I ultimately realized that the more important question was, how do I become a person that I can be proud of? I started to believe that no one was their worst mistake. I have personally known many people who have been judged for their worst moments in their lives, including myself. And when I realized that I was more than my mistakes, I just wanted others to see that in me also. And then I realized that if I want others to extend that grace and understanding to me, I must also extend it to them. The main thing that drove me to turn my life around so drastically while I was in prison was the fear that I would only be remembered for the terrible crimes I was a part of. So many of us define ourselves by our mistakes, and in doing so, we rob ourselves of the chance to step into our true potential. Throughout my 26 years in prison, I came to the realization that no one is the worst thing that they have done and that every person is capable of change. Helping others to see that in themselves and do something about it has become my why. Oftentimes, the people we look at with judgment have traumas we know nothing about. Sometimes a person hasn't been taught how to take responsibility for their choices or how to make better ones moving forward. I got an education and took classes that taught me different life skills, which helped to change my perception of the world. But no true change happened in my life 
until I took complete responsibility for my reality, reprogrammed my mind, and dealt with my inner turmoil. I'm standing here today because the laws for juvenile convicted as adults have changed, which gave me the opportunity to gain early release in March of 2021. <laughs> Since my release, I have published the book that I wrote while I was in prison and created a character development life skills class from it, in which I aim to help others face their demons and deal with the toxic thinking patterns they have that are keeping them trapped in a mediocre life that they are not happy with. I help people to see possibility and potential instead of limitations and deceit. My mission is to help people create lasting change in their lives by recognizing what they need to change and then following through on putting in the work that it takes to become the best version of themselves. Having overcome so many barriers in my own life, I know that it is possible for others to do the same. If we take responsibility for our life, change our paradigms and develop self-discipline. We can transcend the limitations that we have placed on ourselves. No matter what our path in this life has been, we all have the incredible power of choice. We can choose to be the kind of person who extends empathy and embraces solutions instead of the kind of person who casts judgment and sees no hope for those who have lost their way. Consciously planting your energy brings dreams to life, and I am living proof of that. The quality of your life is a direct reflection of the work that you put into it. Planting your energy is about maintaining a mindfulness of the thoughts that we think and the actions that we take. It's about living with intention. Choose to take these challenges in your life, turn them into something where you grow and you build resilience. Get excited about planting new seeds, pursuing your purpose and blooming where you're planted. Do not allow a circumstance to cripple your growth. I would like to challenge each of you today to find one powerful way that you can plant your energy in your life. Choose to create a vision for your life and pursue it with passion. And I will leave you with this. We get this one beautiful life and we get to choose what we make of it. If you are not happy with where you are at, choose to change it. Woo!